Olá, tudo bom, gente? Bem-vindos à nossa live de quinta. Tudo bom, Dave? How are you? Tudo jóia? Bem-vindos, vamos chegando. Pode dar um oi aí na sessão de comentários aqui do lado. Falar se você está aqui no Brasil ou onde você está. A maioria não está aqui, né? Então dá um alô aí, gente. Dizendo aí onde vocês estão. So tell us in the comment section where you are right now. It's always nice to know a little bit about you guys. <laughs> Tudo bom, Scott? Tudo jóia? Oi, Jacob! Tudo certinho? Beleza? Glad to see you all here, guys. Uh, e vamos aproveitar para usar a hashtag Yepper Squad. So if you are Yepper, you can use the hashtag right now, Yeppers or Yepper Squad. So we all can know that you are a student from our private school. Tudo bom, vocês? Tudo jóia? Ok, so Jacob saying, tudo ótimo, estou no Canadá, isso aí. <laughs> Boa noite, Safe. Tudo jóia? Tudo bem comigo, Dave? E você? Como é que você tá? I hope you're fine. Oi, Marcos! Tudo bom? Marcos is also a yapper, guys. Que bom, que bom ver vocês. Scott, too. Scott is also a yapper. Very, very nice, guys. Welcome. <laughs> Ei, hey, Albert, tudo bom? Bem-vindo! So, guys, while I just wait a little bit until class, let me tell you something very exciting. Well, at least for me, I enjoyed a lot doing this. I hope you guys enjoy also a lot what I prepared for you, okay? Um, This weekend, actually, this Sunday, uh, most of you guys celebrate Valentine's Day, right? Um, it, it, by the way, uh, we here in Brazil, we don't celebrate Valentine's Day. We have a date specific to celebrate love, uh, but it's not February 14. It wouldn't be very nice to celebrate it in February since Normally, we are celebrating carnival, so, so you guys can have an idea. If it wasn't for COVID, we were supposed to celebrate carnival this weekend, starting this uh, Friday, up to Wednesday. Well, in Bahia, they spend the whole week celebrating it. But anyway, what I mean is that it wouldn't like fit to celebrate Valentine's Day And at the same time, carnival, do you agree? Uh, I'm kidding, but that's it. We celebrate actually this date related to love and uh, this kind of um, romantic relationships in June, June uh, the 12th. And we'll talk more about it later. I actually think we have uh, some videos here on YouTube where we talk a little bit about it. Uh, so you can just search for these videos. But the thing is, uh, since most of our students are celebrating this special date this weekend, I prepared a playlist for you guys to listen with your loved ones or just by yourself showing love to yourself. We don't have to have a partner to show love, to honor love, right? Uh, at least I think. So I prepared this uh, playlist with Brazilian music from different singer uh, groups. Uh, but uh, all of these songs I, I put in the list, they are about love in, in a way. I hope you guys love it. I will launch it uh, tonight on Instagram. So I'll I'll share with you in our stories. So stay tuned, okay? Because I'll post there so you all can have access to this playlist. I hope you really enjoy. Then you give me your feedback, okay? Because I would love to know what you guys think about the list. 
I'm pretty excited about. I love doing playlists. This is my thing, you know. <laughs> okay. So let me see who else is here. Oi, Aditya. Tudo bom? Working and studying. Tá trabalhando. Muito bom. Oi, Steven. Tudo jóia? <laughs> Steven is asking, como foi seu aniversário? Foi ótimo, gente. Em lockdown, né? Tô aqui em casa, em quarentena. Só encontrei os meus pais, meu marido, mas foi ótimo. Deu para sentir muito carinho de todos vocês, mesmo de longe. So, it was great, although I only saw my parents and my husband, but it was uh, very nice. I could feel all the... Thoughtful messages from all of you guys. It was pretty nice. <laughs> so, oi, Shonda, tudo bem? Safe already knew that we celebrate Valentine's in June. <laughs> That's it. Uh, oi, Lupi, tudo bem, Lupi? Bem-vinda. <laughs> obrigada, Jacob. Thanks for... Uh, your votes. Muito obrigada. Oi, Darren. Welcome. Well, so let's start, right? Let's do it. So, guys, um, today I want to talk to you about how to study Portuguese by yourselves. So, sometimes, actually, in our classes, we show you uh, different kinds of exercises, of practices that you can do by yourself to improve your Portuguese knowledge, right? Uh, and today, the whole class is focused on this practice, okay? So, um, I'll show you how you can study Portuguese by yourself, practicing, listening, you're listening, reading, um, how to learn new vocabulary, new expressions, all of this by yourself. So for this, I'm going to show you uh, a very cool tool that we got, we uh, from Yes Portuguese created. I'm sure that some of you already have it. And if you don't have it yet, you can, you can access this, uh, this amazing tool I'm talking about. I just want to show you how to use it. And not only this too, you can do this kind of practice with other, other resources. Maybe you have another one that can work the same way. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Just let me find something here. Hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what I'm talking about is this <laughs> our ebook 100 daily conversations in Brazilian Portuguese uh, I said that some of you probably uh, already have it because we gave it as a bonus for some of you uh, and some purchase this ebook and guys it's just a very cool resource to study Portuguese because as the name says in this ebook, you find 100 conversations in Portuguese, in Brazilian Portuguese, and we provide the transcription of this conversation. Also, can you hear the rain? It's raining a lot. Oh, by the way, do you know how to say it's raining cats and dogs here in Portuguese, in Brazil, <laughs> in Portuguese? If you know, you tell me in the comment section, okay? But continuing, we have the audio, also we have the text, so you can listen, you can read. We have a glossary with some of the most important expressions, and we have a quiz in the end of the ebook, so you can test if you really got what this uh, dialogue uh, is saying. So, <laughs> Lupi is saying, uh, I bought it, it's good. Great, Lupi. That's nice. That's nice to know that you liked it. And guys, you can do it with other resources. If you have, for example, I don't know, some kind of video with the text available, like the subtitles available, you can also do it. The idea is having an audio and the transcription of this audio. So you can do what I'll propose here. So if you have it in a movie uh, or, I don't know, 
if you have any other kind, any other source like this, you can apply what I'm about to show you to, okay? Well, so let me show you how we can do it with this uh, ebook specifically, how you guys can do this. Um, let me show you. So here is a page of our ebook. Let me put it bigger. This is just for you guys to have an idea of a whole page. How is it like? So you have here the dialogue, okay? The title of the dialogue. Uh, and here a glossary, okay? And the audios, uh, they are available in another part, of course, but they are also available if you purchase the ebook. So let me put it like this. So, um, no, <laughs> just for you guys to have an idea how it is. But before really, we really look into this dialogue, uh, I'll propose you to do something first. So if you have this kind of resource, the first thing you should do is to listen, okay? So we'll listen to this dialogue. I just show you, just a sneak peek. We'll listen to it twice, okay? So we listen the first time, try to understand the best we can, and then the second time, which will be better, we try to focus on the parts we couldn't really understand, okay? So that's what I'm showing you right now. Um, it's here. So I'll play it for the first time and then I'll play it again. So let's go. I don't know why it's not playing. Let's try it again. Nanda, tem um convite para você. Ah, é? Que é? Nós vamos sair para jantar fora hoje. Uau! Qual é a ocasião? Nada demais. Só quero que a gente saia, como nos velhos tempos. Hum, que lindo, amor. E onde a gente vai? Você que vai escolher. Ah, não. Nós dois, ué. Tá bom. Os dois. O que você tá afim de comer hoje? Carne, massa, japonês... Hum, tava doida para ir naquele japonês no que abriu. É uma boa. Se bem que também ama aquela churrascaria que a gente ia sempre. Top também. Tem também a pizzaria da Rua 7 de setembro. Nossa, é uma delícia lá. Já sei. Vamos comer massa naquela cantina italiana que eu amo? Beleza. <risos> ok, so, segunda vez, second time. Let's go again. Nanda, tem um convite para você. Ah, é? que é? Nós vamos sair para jantar fora hoje. Uau! Qual é a ocasião? Nada demais. Só quero que a gente saia, como nos velhos tempos. Hum, que lindo, amor. E onde a gente vai? Você que vai escolher. Ah, não. Nós dois, ué. Tá bom. Os dois. O que você tá afim de comer hoje? Carne, massa, japonês... Hum, tava doida para ir naquele japonês novo que abriu. É uma boa. Se bem que também ama aquela churrascaria que a gente ia sempre. Top também. Tem também a pizzaria da Rua 7 de setembro. Nossa, é uma delícia lá. Já sei. Vamos comer massa naquela cantina italiana que eu amo? Beleza. <risos> Muito bem. Deu para entender, gente? Eu... Tava muito difícil. What do you guys think? Was it easy to understand or too hard? Would you like to listen to it a third time? Let me see what you guys think. Mm. If you guys think it's enough, then we can go to the next step. If you want to listen to it a second time, we can do it. Hmm. Entendi um pouco, Scott said. Entendi um pouco, so he, he got it a little bit. Going out to eat. Yes, the dialogue is about this. Very good. 
Shonda, entendeu? Muito bem. Very good. So, I think you guys are, uh, are fine with the listening. So now we can do the next step. <laughs> the guy, <laughs> the guy sounds like Marcus. It's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> it's his voice. He loves to play these dialogues, but he doesn't have a choice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, well, now we are going to do this next step. We're going to listen and read the dialogue at the same time. So now I can show you the, the text from the ebook and we can listen to it as, at the same time. So Pay attention to the parts where you couldn't really understand what they were saying. And maybe you understood, but you don't recognize the word. Maybe reading it, it will be better. Okay? So, let's go. Here. I think you need it in a bigger size. It's oops, too small. Better now? I think it is. <laughs> Vamos lá, gente. Um, let's play it again. Nanda, tem um convite para você. Ah, é? Que é? Nós vamos sair para jantar fora hoje. Uau! Qual é a ocasião? Nada demais. Só quero que a gente saia, como nos velhos tempos. Hum, que lindo, amor. E onde a gente vai? Você que vai escolher. Ah, não. Nós dois, ué. Tá bom. Os dois. O que você tá afim de comer hoje? Carne, massa, japonês? Hum, tava doida pra ir naquele japonês novo que abriu. É uma boa. Se bem que também ama aquela churrascaria que a gente ia sempre. Top também. Tem também a pizzaria da Rua 7 de Setembro. Nossa. É uma delícia lá. Já sei. Vamos comer massa naquela cantina italiana que eu amo? Beleza. <risos> so many options she gave him, right? <risos> Poor guy. Gente, vamos lá. Now, before we, we really uh, uh, dive into this dialogue, I'll propose we do another activity. And this uh, is more interesting to be done by you than by me. That's it. It's a technique called shadowing, where you listen to someone reading a text, saying something uh, that you have, the, trans the transcription, and you just follow this person. You try to read together with, it, with him or her, okay? Um, I'll do it so you guys can have an idea What, what is it like? Uh, and you can pref uh, perform these two. If you already understand how is it, you can just do it together with me, okay? Um, or you can do it later, okay, as a practice. These guys helps with intonation because something very hard to learn for, uh, from a, uh, another language is the, the music of this language, right? Because we can understand grammar, know vocabulary and etc. But to know uh, how to say something in this uh, language intonation, it's very hard actually, because we are used to say things in our own music, right? In the music of our own language. So this technique helps with pronunciation because you're going to follow the person reading. So we will imitate this person and also imitate the written of the, the, the sentences, okay? So I'll do it. You can do it together with me or you can do it later. Uh, it's a very good thing to do if you have an audio in the transcription, okay? So let's... I think I'll miss the really the, the very <laughs> beginning, but I'll follow. Let's go. Nanda, tem um convite para você. você. Ah, ah, é? é? O que é? Nós vamos, Nós vamos sair para jantar, jantar fora, fora hoje. 
Uau! Qual, qual é a ocasião? Nada demais. Nada demais. Só, Só quero, quero que a gente, a gente saia, saia, como nos velhos tempos. tempos. Hum, hum, que, que lindo, lindo amor. amor. E onde, e onde a, gente a gente vai? vai? Você, Você que vai escolher. escolher. Ah, não. Ah, não. Nós dois, ué. Tá, tá bom. bom. Os, Os dois. dois. O que, o que você, você tá, tá afim, afim de comer, comer hoje? Carne, Carne massa, massa, japonês. japonês. Hum, tava ah, doida para ir naquele japonês, japonês novo que abriu. É uma, é uma boa. boa. Se, Se bem que também amo aquela, aquela churrascaria que a gente ia sempre. Assim. Top, Top também. também. Tem, Tem também a pizzaria, a pizzaria da Rua 7, 7 de setembro. setembro. Nossa, Nossa, é uma, uma delícia. delícia lá. Já sei. Já sei. Vamos, Vamos comer na massa de italiano que eu amo. Beleza. Beleza. Guys, I'm laughing because it's not easy. Can you see? It was hard for me. I'm Brazilian, I'm native speaker, and it's not easy. It gets easier, of course, if you listen it more and more often. Then you get the lines, you'll understand what they're about to say, and you know the intonation they will give to the sentence. But it's a nice way to do it. And Just get this intonation, like imitate how babies learn a language. They imitate all the time. They are imitating us the way we say something, the way we uh, express our feelings, right? That's why we have to pay attention to the things that we say close to little kids because they, they just repeat it. So that's why this technique has a reason. Uh, to be done, okay? Because it helps you with that. But it's not easy, like I said, and it's funny. I recommend you do that on your own, alone, <laughs> in a locked room. Otherwise, people will think you're crazy, right? <laughs> so Aditya is saying, tô imaginando se eles conseguissem comer tudo isso. Oh my God, <laughs> imagine that. If they could eat all of the options she gave, would be amazing, actually. Mm. Okay, guys. Just, uh, by the way, about the expression you mentioned, I saw some, of op some, op some options here. Let me find them. Uh, this one, Stacho Vengatsi Cachorros, would be the literal translation, but we don't really say this in Portuguese. So the one we use is this one. Tá chovendo canivetes. <laughs> it makes no sense, of course. Like in English. A canivete, guys, it's, you know, like a pen knife, uh, a switch blade, something like this. So that's it. I don't know exactly why we say this. Uh, okay. So now that we have done it, we read it, we can do another thing. Now we are going to try to understand what's going on in this dialogue in terms of uh, comprehension, understanding, okay? So let me show you this. Um, if you look into this page, all of the dialogues, they have, as I said, the audio, and also this glossary here. And here they picked some of, uh, we picked some of the most important vocabulary and expressions that you uh, might not know. And we put them here with the meaning of each of them. Uh, maybe you'll find some words that you don't know the meaning and then you may think, oh, they should be in the glossary. But Maybe we didn't put it because it was already in a previous dialogue, okay? So the expressions we picked were, first one, this one here, nada demais, then carne, massa, japonês, se bem que, topo, churrascaria, and cantina. So let's check them first. So, nada demais means nothing special. So, if some Brazilian, if a Brazilian person says, ah, oh, nada demais, it's nothing special. Not a big deal. Okay? Carne is the word we use normally to refer to meat. Meat. But interestingly, 
normally when we say carne, it's um, we can infer that we are talking about beef. So normally, if we just say carne, we are talking about beef. Sometimes we can specify if we are talking about a different kind of meat, such as pork, uh, chicken. But normally, if we just say carne, we are referring to beef. Okay, but literally it means meat. Also, we have here massa, which is the word we use for pasta. Okay, so any kind of pasta in Portuguese is massa. Japanese, uh, which literally means Japanese, uh, makes reference to Japanese food. So we can also say comida japonesa. It's also common to say, ah, eu gosto de comida japonesa. Eu adoro comida japonesa. Vamos comer comida japonesa? But we just simplify it and very commonly people say just japonese. Interestingly, in the masculine and not in the feminine. It should be in the feminine form because we are referring to the food, which is feminine in Portuguese. Comida, right? But that's it. Another expression, a very important one. Se bem que. It's informal, very used, and it means although. Okay? So a very good expressions that we not often find in general books, but very, very much used by Brazilians. So se bem que. Although. Okay? It's a conjunction. Here we have... Churrascaria, I'm sure a lot of you know the meaning because some of you uh, have it in your country. I know that in the US, as we have a lot of Brazilians, it's not so hard to find that churrascaria. And what is it? It's a place, a restaurant that prepares and serves Brazilian barbecue. And you know that Brazilian barbecue, it's quite different from... Uh, other barbecues, right? Um, we eat lots of meat, actually. So if you're a vegan person, you wouldn't like it. Um, but that's it. So churras churrascaria is a place that serves this Brazilian barbecue. And they have a whole system to do that. It's very cool. You stay in your table and the, um, the waiters, they just come with large pieces of meat and they cut it into your plate and a lot of uh, uh, churrascarias have this system that you show if you want to be served or not so you can use like a, a um, green sign showing that you are available <laughs> you want to receive more meat and if you are already feeling like satisfied then you can show the red sign <laughs> So they don't come. It's funny, guys. You should try this. It's a Brazilian experience, I would say. Let me know if some of you have ever been in a churrascaria. Have you guys? I know that one of our yappers love it. Charles, he loves it. Um, and by the way, I see a very nice tip here from Sage. We can restart our study group again and get back to going through these dialogues. This is a very nice idea, guys. Very nice. Um, so the other word, guys, is this one. Um, it's interesting because here it means, I mean, so if you invite someone to do something or to if you give uh, a suggestion about something or a place to go, and the person agrees, she or he can say, um, I mean, in English, then top, eu top, okay? But this word uh, with another pronunciation can mean another thing. So if I say topo, topo, then I'm talking about uh, the top, very similar to English, right? So the top of a, mon a, a mountain would be Topo da montanha. So notice the pronunciation. If it's the noun, meaning top, then I say 
topo, 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 o, 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 ok? On the other hand, if I'm referring to this word here, which is a verb, like meaning I, I'll join you, I'll do it, I mean, then we say with an open O, topo, 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 O, 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 got it? Practice, guys, this is practice. Um, it's the same difference that you guys like about vo and vo, okay? Same. And the last word here is actually these two, like cantina italiana, cantina italiana. Here, guys, uh, it's very common to refer to Italian restaurants in Brazil like this, cantina italiana. So that's it. If you hear people say cantina, just cantina or cantina italiana, they can, they may be referring to these Italian restaurants. Or if you just see the word cantina, isolated, they can also be referring to um, the place where the kids eat in the school. So every school in Brazil um, and everywhere, of course, they have a place where the students go to eat, right? And this place is called cantina too. Okay, so cantina can be the Italian restaurant, cantina italiana, or this place to eat in a school. Okay, so far. Okay, guys, let me see. Uh, yeah, Andre is saying, I need to pull out this book and audios will be very good for practice. Guys, I have to show it. It's a very nice source of information. With Plants of expressions from Brazil, like things that we only see inside these kinds of uh, inside these kinds of natural conversations. For example, let me show you here, so you guys can have an idea about uh, the topics. For example, we have a, a section about traveling and meeting people. Another one about eating, drinking, and buying food. Another about holidays and vacations. Uh, next, family and friends. Also, work conversations, school and studies, daily services, buying stuff. You see? So, it's really uh, interesting because it's like all the, the vocabulary you probably need for traveling to Brazil to understand how to communicate with people, you're going to find here. Well, so now let's understand what they're saying in this dialogue, right? So let me just, yep. So let's go line by line now. Um, and of course, this part is more interesting if you already have a certain level in Portuguese. If you are a, a, a beginner, total beginner, this part is harder. You need more uh, content to understand uh, the dialogue, right? Um, so let me see. So, Pradeep, uh, I'm not saying it right. Right. <laughs> Churrascaria não fica na Índia, mas quero ir lá. One day. Vamos preparar. André is saying, Brazilian barbecue is very good. It is, guys. If you like meat, it's very good. Very good. <laughs> uh, avô e avó, muito difícil. It it requires practice, I have to say, it requires. But it's like I said, practice. So if you keep doing it, you got it, okay? You get it. Um, oh, safe. I went to an amazing one, Fogo de Chão in Rio. Mm -hmm. And I know that they have um, 
uh, another restaurant in Miami, if I'm not mistaken. Some, some student told me that they have one there. So folks in the US, you can go there. <laughs> Oh, so Scott is saying, que bom, a gente tem um fogo de chão aqui, mas não tentei. So Scott, you can go there. They say it's very, very good. I've heard it's very good. <laughs> And it's like, uh, it's, it's from Brazil, so you won't have like a fake thing. This is nice. It, this is nice. Um, so Sadrak, uh, where do we find this ebook? I can tell you guys the link to find the ebook, but you guys can also use this um, this QR code here. If you uh, place your phone, you'll be right, redirected to the page where you find this ebook. But let me just find also uh, the link, and I can also paste here for you guys to see everything about it and let me tell you you by, by purchasing this ebook you also get a study planner to organize your study routine and not get lost how you can learn with this ebook uh, we'll explain in a short course how to study with the the ebook um, and then you have all the material, the audios, the transcriptions, the glossaries, the quizzes. I'm going to show you the quizzes later. Okay, but that's it. So you can just um, use this, <laughs> this QR code here, or you guys can use this link I just post here in the comment section. You're going to see. It's yesportuguese.com slash e100dc slash. Okay? You can also use it. Um, ah, Lupi saying we have fogo de chão in Chicago, in Texas. Que chique! How nice! So, guys from Chicago and Texas, you also have it. Nice. Ah, Gustavo, tudo bem? Gustavo is saying, fogo de chão em Miami é muito bom. So, <laughs> uh, so Lu Lucero is saying, do you ship the book? The, actually, it's a knee book. So it's an online book. Uh, so we, we don't ship it because uh, it's an e-book. It's an electronic book. Uh, we were thinking about selling it uh, in Amazon because then you can just uh, ask for the printed version. They, they have this option. Uh, so maybe soon we can do that, but for now we only have the ebook, okay? Um, <laughs> so let's continue. So let's understand what's going on in this dialogue, guys. Let's do it right now. Vamos lá. So, first thing, Bernardo, the guy, he calls uh, her girlfriend, wife, we don't know exactly, by Nanda. This is a nickname for Fernanda, okay? So, Fernanda, they are often called Nanda. And if the guy is called Fernando, they are also, he's also called Nando. It's a common nickname for these names. So, Nanda, tem um convite para você. So, I have an invitation for you. And she says, oh really? So, to say, oh really? In Portuguese, you, you say, ah é? And pay attention to the intonation. Ah é? Oh, really? I, I, eh? That's it. Que é? What is it? Que é? And he says, Nós vamos sair para jantar fora hoje. We are going out to have dinner tonight. Okay? So it's an affirmation. We are going out to have dinner tonight. So, vamos sair. We are going, we are going out. We'll go out. Para jantar fora, to have dinner out, okay? 
tonight. In Portuguese, we just say hoje, but here in English, we can infer that we would use tonight, okay? Although he didn't say uh, hoje à noite, okay? Then, Fernanda says, oh, wow, like, wow, <laughs> she's impressed. Qual é a ocasião? What's the occasion? And he uses the expressions. The expression we saw in the glossary, he says, nada demais, só quero que a gente saia. Uh, como nos velhos tempos, so nothing special. I just want us to go out, só quero que a gente saia, I just want us to go out, so só me, just in this case. Como nos velhos tempos, like in the old times, okay? Then, Fernanda says, mm, oh, que lindo, amor. Que lindo, guys. It's interesting because lindo means beautiful. But we often use it like to make a compliment. Not about someone's beauty, but about something nice that the person did. What, it's, uh, what is happening, actually, in this case. Because she's saying, que lindo, amor. Meaning, how nice, babe. Or, how cute uh, from you, how nice of you, okay? So, we use it uh, in these situations too, okay? To say that the, the person is doing something nice. Well, how nice, babe. And a very common way to address um, your partner, um, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, husband, wife, it's to call them amor. It's the same as honey, babe. So in Portuguese, it's very common to say amor. And she asks, e onde a gente vai? And where are we going to? Aonde, onde a gente vai, né? And he says, você que vai escolher. So he's saying, uh, you choose. So literally, it's like he was saying, it's you that will choose, okay? It's you that will choose. So, you choose. That's it. So, escolher, it's the verb choose. And she says, ah, no. Oh, no. Nós dois, ué. So, nós dois means both of us, right? So, both of us. And ué, guys, it's an interjection, okay? It doesn't have a specific meaning. It's just an interjection that we use when uh, we don't agree with the other person or when you have a question, we are not certain about something. We have many different situations. And here it's because she doesn't agree with him because he said she should choose and she wants them both to choose. Well, then he agrees, he says, Tá bom, tá bom is the expression we use to say, okay, right? To agree, okay, os dois, both of us, okay? So to say both of us, in Portuguese you can just say os dois or nós dois, as she said, okay? She said before, os dois. And he says, o que você tá afim de comer hoje? So what uh, are you up to eat? today or what are you feeling like eating what what do you feel like eating today so here this expression actually it's this estar a fim de it means to feel like doing something okay this is the equivalent expression to this one in english so what what do you feel like eating today O que você tá afim de comer hoje? So, in Portuguese, let me write here in the comment section for you. The expression is estar a fim de, and then you put the verb you want. So, I can say, for example, hoje eu tô afim de tomar uma caipirinha. So, hoje eu tô, it's the verb estar, a fim de, Tomar, the verb, uma caipirinha, okay? So, today I feel like drinking like a caipirinha, that's it. 
I don't think this will happen, guys. Sorry. <laughs> but let's see it. Then he, give, he gives uh, some suggestions. Carne, massa, japonês. So, um, some meat, pasta, Japanese food. He's giving her some options. And we saw them in the glossary. Then Fernanda says, um, hmm, tava doida para ir naquele japonês novo que abriu. So, hmm, here is like she's thinking. Hmm, estava doida. Estar doida. So the expression is, let me put again in the comment section. Estar doido or doida. Uh, means... Uh, that you really want something, okay? I'm crazy to do something, like I, I really want to do this thing. So if, if someone say, eu tô doida pra ir nesse restaurante. This means, I really want to go to this restaurant. So if I, I use the expression, estar doido pra fazer alguma coisa, so uh, the meaning is that I really want, I want this bad, okay, to do this thing. That's the meaning here. She's not crazy. She just want to go to this restaurant uh, very badly. So the meaning would be, uh, I, I really want to go to the new uh, Japanese restaurant. She, she didn't say restaurant, but we can infer she's referring to a restaurant. So. I was really into, I really wanted to go to the new uh, Japanese restaurant that just opened up. That's the, the meaning here. So I, I was really wanting to go or I really want to go to that Japanese restaurant, that new Japanese restaurant that just opened or opened up. So, interestingly, we say it in the past here. We could also say in the present. Ah, tô doida pra ir. The difference is that she's feeling like this for a while. It's not something that she's feeling that day. It's been a while that she has been craving to go to this place. You know, that's why she used here pretérito imperfeito, passado. Okay, but we could also say, tô doida pra ir, okay, giving this notion that it's something that I feel uh, lately, more close to the present moment. Um, and he agrees, he says, é uma boa, literally this means, it's a good, meaning it's a good idea, é uma boa, it's a good idea, and <laughs> she says, Se bem que, remember we saw this expression in the glossary? Although, também amo aquela churrascaria que a gente ia sempre. I also love that churrascaria that we used to go often. Ok? Uh, a gente ia, we used to go, here is the pretérito imperfeito, and sempre... Uh, it's very much used in Portuguese with, with this sense of often, frequently, okay? So she was thinking about the Japanese restaurant, but then she thought about the churrascaria. That's why she started with sibenki. Although I also love that churrascaria that we uh, used to go often. And he said... Topo também. I'm in too. So, meaning he also uh, would love to go to this place. So, topo também. I'm in. And then she remembered, she, she, she got reminded of a third place. Then she says, Tem também a pizzaria da Rua 7 de Setembro. So, there's also that pizza place or a pizza place is called a pizzeria uh, in the 7 de setembro street. Rua means street. Then, Bernardo says, nossa, é uma delícia lá. 
Nossa, uh, it's an interjection to show many different things too. In this case, it's a nice thing. Like, wow, it's delicious there. So here, he can be talking about the food, delicious, but also about the place. We very often use the word delícia to refer to places, um, to times in the past, to say that something's nice, not all, only to talk about uh, a delicious food, okay? So, nossa, é uma delícia lá. The food, the place, it's very nice. And she says, finally, já sei, I know, like, got it. Vamos comer massa naquela cantina italiana que eu amo. Uh, let's go eat pasta in that Italian restaurant that I love. <laughs> so she thought about all the options. And then he patiently said, Beleza, okay. <laughs> he agrees with everything. A very easygoing person. Muito tranquilo, right? Okay, guys. Got it? I want to know if you guys understood everything, if there was any expression that you didn't really understand, if you would like to understand um, more properly. I, I didn't stay longer in each uh, line just because I wanted to give you the whole context, right? So you can do that. You can go line by line like this to understand what they were saying. Um, you can just try to have the general idea. It depends on your level, but it's a very uh, complete way to study. Can you see that? Because you can practice audio, uh, reading, expressions, learn new structures. It's very, very nice, guys. And let me show you. To help you, because imagine you have the ebook and then you did all these steps. You listen to the dialogue twice. You listen and read it silently. Then you did the practice of speaking, the shadowing technique, like reading together with the audio. Then you moved to understanding the text, checking the glossary, and then reading line by line to understand everything. And then you still are not sure if you really understood the dialogue. We have something else for you. In the end of this uh, ebook, guys, we have a quiz. Let me find it for you. It's here. Let me, by the way, show you all. So this is the first page of our ebook. Here we have a presentation, um, some ways to contact us, the index with all the dialogues, so you can find them here. And then we start each uh, section, as I showed you. Traveling, eating, all the sections are then here. So you find all, of, find all of them. And we find the quiz, as I told you. So here, guys, you have quizzes to test if you really understood the dialogues. So it's not a quiz about uh, grammar. It's a quiz about the whole understanding of the dialogue. So normally we have three questions for each uh, dialogue. And this is very nice. And we have the answers too. So you can really check um, if you understood. So let me show you the one from this dialogue. Mm, here. So this one here, guys, can you see this? Oops. Oh, gosh, uh, because it's clickable. <laughs> Let's go there again. So it's here. Okay. So, so we have these three questions. So let's see the first one. What is Bernardo's? I'm saying it in English, but in Portuguese we say Bernardo. Okay, so what is Bernardo's invitation? What is it, guys? Tell me. Letter A. He will cook a dinner to Fernanda. B. 
He wants to go walk with Fernanda or C. He wants to dine out with Fernanda. What is the correct answer here? A, B, or C? Of course, now that we have uh, read the whole dialogue and I explain everything, it's much easier. If you do that by yourself, you probably will find harder and it will be a good way to check if you really understood the dialogue. Um, so while I wait your answer about this first question, Melissa asked, what does beleza exactly mean? Good question. Beleza means literally beauty, okay? So we, use, we also use it to refer to beauty. For example, um, I can say, este lugar tem uma beleza incrível. So, este lugar tem uma beleza incrível. Meaning, this place has an incredible beauty. Okay? So, we use it uh, to refer to beauty, but also we use it to, to say, okay, so when we agree with the person, someone asks you something, invites you to something, and you agree, uh, you can say, Ok, in Portuguese you say ok, but you can also say beleza. Ok, so that's the, the two meanings. Um, <laughs> Olá, Charles, tudo bom? I mentioned you, I've mentioned you before because we are, were talking about barbecue, Brazilian barbecue and churrascarias. <laughs> so guys, see, very good, Shonda. It's letter C, guys. He wants to dine out with Fernanda. That's the answer. So let's check number two. Where did they decide to go? Letter A, to a Japanese restaurant, B, to a churrascaria, or C, to an Italian restaurant. So we know that the last thing she mentioned was the Italian restaurant, Cantina, right? So the correct answer is letter C. And here, the third one. Who does Fernanda think should choose where to go? Just Fernanda, just Bernardo, or both? It's letter C, right? Uh, I'm just giving the answers quickly right now because, uh, as I said, we discussed and I know you guys got it. So that's it. So you guys can have now a better idea of this ebook. That's it, guys. So you guys can see here it's 155 pages of content for you. So we really hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, if you already have it or if you are thinking about having it. Um, so you got it right. Letra C in number three. Oops, I lost it. It's here. Letra C, two and three. Very good, guys. Very good, very good. Here. Um, no, I lost her question. Where is it? Yeah, I think it's not there anymore. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I couldn't download the ebook. Um, actually, this ebook, guys, uh, it's available. I post here the page. Let me post it again. You can purchase this ebook. Uh, if you want, you can just place your phone in front of this QR code here, and then you'll be redirected to the page where you can find the ebook and purchase it. Or you can just uh, use the link I just posted here in the comment section. You can see it. It's esportuguese.com slash e100dc slash. Okay, you can just copy and paste it to be redirected to the ebook. Um, as I said, in this ebook, you find the dialogues, 100 dialogues with the transcriptions, the audios, glossary about each dialogue, 
um, also the quizzes, and you get also a study plan to help you to organize your studies um, in this ebook and classes explaining how to study with it. Okay. Well, guys, I think that's it. Have you enjoyed this guide to study with this dialogue? And as I said, you can study with other resources too, but not always is easy to find like a text with the audio. That's why we decided to create this because we know uh, that we lack this kind of uh, resource in Brazilian Portuguese. So uh, it's really nice, a really nice way to study, like an easy going way to study. You can just pick a dialogue a day, study in it, just one, you know, you go in this dialogue and really dive into, into the dialogue. Um, it's a very led back way to study and learn uh, without really doing a lot of effort, you know, in a simply way, simple way, and just like this. Uh, and if you guys liked, please give us give us some likes here. <laughs> uh, we need them to be seen by more people so we can help more people to learn Portuguese and we can uh, show our work for more people. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Muito obrigada for being here for this past hour. It was really quick. I didn't even see it pass. And, and that's it. And don't forget, tonight on Instagram, I'll be launching <laughs> the playlist for Valentine's Day. So you can listen to these Brazilian songs I collected for these moments so you can listen to it with your loved one or just by yourself, loving yourself, showing love to yourself, okay? It's a very nice one. It, I, I collected these cool romantic songs, also some with more rhythm, and um, I really like the singers I put there. I hope you like it too. Um, just have a question here. Oops. Oi, professora, how do you say in Portuguese? In Portuguese, what was the last thing you said? Qual foi a última coisa que você disse? Qual foi a última coisa que você disse? <laughs> Oh, that's great. I mean, uh, I missed your class already. I also miss you guys. But remember, next week, same time, I'll be here live with you, okay? After Carnival, which won't happen here in Brazil. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy Valentine's Day with someone or with the most important person of your life, yourself. <laughs> guys, thank you very much. Muito obrigada. Tchau, tchau. Até a próxima aula. Remember some likes, please. <laughs> tchau, tchau, gente.